And uh, that night, you know, I went to sleep. And uh, for the next six months, I cried every night. And because because people and talk about this in the book, you know, you know what's coming. There's a good ending. Yeah. You know, God did some amazing things yeah. uh, in my life today that I'll talk about. But I didn't know that at the time. But there are people that judged how long I grieved. Mm. Well, she didn't grieve long enough. Mm. Well, surely God couldn't put her heart back together. There's no way. Well, she probably would never really loved Marcus. I mean, you can't believe the comments that I would read. And so um, for six months, I cried every night. I talk about it in the book about the seventh month because I grieved him, but I didn't grieve without hope. That's right. And so about the seventh month, the Lord said, okay, um, I need you to get your house in order. Mm. And I was like, my house in order? Are you kidding me? Right. And he said, no, not spiritually. He said, physically. Mm. He said, because I've been eating ice cream every night. How could and you <laughs> not? Grief eating is real. Let's no no no. We're slowing down right here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I gained ten pounds as my father lost. Oh wow. Yeah. His pounds. Yeah. Because he his decline from the time he went into the hospital, um, uh, January seventh to the time of his death, February twenty fourth, was seven weeks. Yeah. So it was a very fast decline. Yeah. I was eating water burger, fried apple pies at two o'clock <laughs> in the morning, two at a time. Yeah. Yeah. I was popping them like they were mints. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think we we elaborate enough on stuff like that, right? Grief yeah. is people grieve in different ways. Yeah. And um, I, I think I'm also because you're my friend, so just give me a moment. I'm also really pissed <laughs> at the people that didn't think you grieved enough. Yeah. When you clearly stated you cried for six months straight. Yeah. Like, six minutes is a long time to do something. Yeah. Six yeah. hours is a long yeah. time to do something. Well, you could six have done days. 10 years and it wouldn't have been enough for some people. Right, exactly. Okay. Th that's know. what I'm saying. Like, the, <laughs> the arbitrary thought that, first of all, what's the time? Since, it, since, since, since six months is too short... Yeah. Is it two years? Is it four years? It's yeah. a, and if you were really in touch with your grief, then it didn't need to be spread out over two or four years. Yeah. Because you were in it. And it's okay if someone needs two years. Absolutely. You know, it's, for sure. it's, it's okay if someone needs a year. Yeah. But at, at about the seven month mark, he said, you know, I want you to get your house in order. So I, I started eating right. I gave up sugar. Mm -hmm. I started going to my Pilates class mm -hmm. and walking and mm -hmm. swimming and the things that I knew, because he said, I've got more for you to do mm -hmm. and I need you to be the best you can be. Yeah, for sure. And so I didn't know the supernatural doors that God was going to open on the other side of this. Yeah. But, you know, that's the whole thing is that some people just lay down and die in a storm and never get back up. Yeah. And especially I've talked to so many widows that have said, you know, thank you for sharing that. The one, one lady heard me talk about this and the next morning she decided to get up take a shower and comb her hair for the first time in a year wow because she had laid down that long and she said but i saw that you got up and then i realized i'm missing out on my children and my grandchildren and they're seeing this person over here that's struggling with depression and laying in the bed yeah. with the with the blinds pulled yeah yeah for sure and so you know i want to say yes you you do grieve but you don't grieve without hope. Correct. And then you allow God to put your heart back together again. And you continue on because guess what? Marcus is not coming back into this space. Mm. And you know what? He wouldn't want to. Mm. And you know what? There's no one that would be happier for me now than Marcus Lamb. Okay, calm down. Hold on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Cool off for a second. Okay. We do not not address that enough. We always think about it from our side. Yeah. But tell me anyone who gets to see Jesus face to face mm. and would trade it to come back down here. Not happening. I know he love you, but if he got to choose you, Joni or Jesus, <laughs> he chunking deuces to Joni. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it, like, I'm just so grateful you had that perspective because mm -hmm. most people just only feel themselves. I lost him. Yeah. He's gone. He left me. 
What do I do? But he is in paradise. Yeah. The place we all want to get to. Right. And it doesn't, my love for him doesn't dissipate because he's there. Like, right. I still, he was the love of my life. Correct. He was the father of my children. Yep. You know, we were in ministry together. Yep. But um, he's not coming back. And right. you know, this is the thing, Tim. Wow. I can't tell you how many times he told me, now, sweetheart, he always called me sweetheart, if anything were to ever, if I were to graduate before you, mm-hmm. I would want you to get remarried. Yeah. And I'd be like, you are crazy. Yeah. I said, I will never submit to another man. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and I said, there's no way. There's no way. I will. I would never get married. Oh, my like, goodness. And, but then later, his words would resonate with me. And I was like, he knew me so much better than I knew myself. Wow. 